So this is part two. There was a size limit on the uh, recording. I'm using the uh, Google Nexus second generation 32 gigabit uh, stock. There hasn't been any updates on it or anything. I'm trying to use it for a drone uh, called a hover camera, Gen, Gen 1. So I need a clean Android for that. Anyway, I'm going to use this as a primary YouTube making device. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how well it, it comes out. So, anyways, continuation from part one. Connecting links and lugs. All car lighting men will appreciate the Edison method of connecting and disconnecting cells. No cutting of lead straps is necessary, nor is there any lead burning to be done. Remove the side slats, unscrew two pull nuts, and lift the cell out of the set. The only special tools necessary for to this operation are a socket wrench for tightening and loosening the nuts of the terminal post, see page 25, and a small screw jack which is provided for breaking contact between the lug and post. The lugs are so seldom disturbed in an Edison battery that they become frozen to the terminal posts making them absolutely perfect making an absolutely perfect contact the simplicity with which the little jack may be used is shown above chemistry of the edison storage battery the fundamental principle of the Edison storage battery is the oxidation and reduction of metals in an electrolyte which neither combines with nor dissolves either the active materials or their oxides. Also an electrolyte which not, notwithstanding its decomposition blah, blah, blah. Also an electrolyte which notwithstanding its decomposition by the action of the electric current is immediately reformed in equal quantity and is therefore a practically constant element without change of density or conductivity over long periods of time. The active material of the positive plate of the Edison storage battery is nickel hydrate, that of the negative plate iron oxide. The electrolyte is a solution of potassium hydrate. The active materials are perfectly insoluble to, in the electrolyte. When current passes either on charge or discharge, the electrolyte is broken up into its component parts which react on the materials with the following results. On charge, positive oxidized, negative reduced. On discharge, positive reduced, negative oxidized. The exact chemical changes that go on within the cell are not definitely known, but those occurring during discharge may be approximately represented by the following equations. So, positive 8K plus 6 NiO2 equal 2 Ni. 3O4 plus K2O negative 8OH plus 3Fe equal Fe3O4 plus 4H2O. The reverse reactions take place on charge. The iron and nickel compounds, which are probably hydrated, but are here treated as pure oxides for the sake of simplicity. It will be noted that the amount that the same amount of KOH is decomposed according to the left hand members of these equations as it is reformed simultaneously as shown on the right. For this reason, the chemical composition or specific gravity of the solution does not change appreciably 
throughout the cycle of charge and discharge. <clears throat> the main advantages of the Edison storage battery from an address by Dr. Charles Proteus Steinmetz. The characteristic feature of the Edison battery which appears to me as the main advantage is the complete reversibility of the chemical reactions which occur in it with the materials iron, nickel, and their oxides in caustic potash as electrolyte. No chemical processes can occur which are not electrolytically reversible. From that then would follow that there could theoretically be no deterioration of the battery, that is, no decrease of capacity from use or abuse. It cannot be seen how an irreversible process could occur in the Edison battery. All these remarkable features that you can overcharge it or over discharge it, can stop it and let it stand charge or discharge, or partially discharge, charge it with reverse polarity, the feature that the ampere hour efficiency is 100% less the electrolytic disassociation of water. While astonishing to one who is familiar with the lead battery, follow as a matter of course from the complete reversibility of the chemical reaction of the Edison battery as obvious results. Inversely then, the existence of these properties is an additional proof that the chemical reaction is completely reversible. That is, the, that the battery does not age, has no definite life, but its life is limited theoretically only by mechanical destruction. Showing how the positive and negative plates are intermeshed. So, uh, that bit there. But its life is limited, theoretically, only by the mechanical destruction. So, you get these, these, uh, these people that run around dissembling these batteries, thinking they, they'll get all the secrets. And they destroy a perfectly... Reusable Golden Goose device by mechanical destruction. So uh, don't be one of these people. Over the course of uh, my channel, I'm not this. This channel is unsustainable. It doesn't make enough money to sustain it. So it's basically me volunteering you information and stuff, and I'll go over all my inform information. Um. Your best bet is just remember the name of my channel. It's going to be on YouTube under Military Industrial Museum. And uh, it'll probably be on other platforms also under that. So just type it in. Just type in Military Industrial Museum and it'll come up. You don't have to worry about all the monotony of subscribing and liking and all that stuff. I don't think it really matters. The, the audience that can comprehend what I'm trying to do here is... Probably, I, just, I could probably count them on one foot. Um, just the same one hand. I mean, it, it's the digits are differentiated, but the number is the same. Anyway, let's get through this. Assembly of the Edison cells and trays. So these are uh, diagrams of a three cell. A8H. Um, the length is 24 and 11 16th inches for three of them connected in the tray. Um, the width is a 7 and 1 16th inch, and the height is 6 and 1 16th inch. Sorry. The bottom width is six and and one sixteenth inch. Um, the side in, the side the side width is seven and one sixteenth inch, and the height is eighteen and 
one eighth inch. So these are best observed on the video. If you're trying to just listen to the audio, you want to look at the video to see these diagrams. Um, There's a four cell A6H, and uh, the, why would you want to know this? Well, if you come across a bunch of these, it might be helpful for identification purposes, or if you're trying to reassemble them into trays, um, you could uh, you could see the original specifications. And so, uh, what what this is probably meant for is. Um, Here's another one, five cell A four H, is so people can uh, people can uh, can look at that and then look at their their, their train car uh, storage compartment and, and and deal. Now I have uh, a four cell A four H. I have a couple of those in trays, and uh, you can tell. There's a lot of there's a lot of gap with that between the cells. Um, so good luck finding them. Uh, data it was probably easier to find the set and restore it than it is to oh it is easier to find the old set and restore it versus trying to kill the golden goose and wreck something with mechanical destruction and then you'd find out what I just told you. You can't make one of these without millions of dollars of tooling and expertise and licensing and, and and EPA hassle and all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> Data on train lighting batteries. Car lighting cells have plates of the same size and design as automobile type cells, but are assembled in higher containers, giving three inches additional space above the plates for solution. So that's a little clue for the uh, automobile type cells. They they weren't, for example, they would be A4s. It wouldn't be A4Hs. So if you're trying to research the automobile use of Edison batteries. Um, that that's a, that's the essential clue. Anyway, this is a whole metric that'll tell you. Uh, most interesting here that I've seen is it lists a. Uh, um, uh, what do you call? Uh, it doesn't list the price. I have an. I have some manual around here that lists the price. Um, yeah, so just take a look at this this uh, chart at your convenience. I'm not going to read all that. It's just impossible to make that audio. And there's a stamp in here that I've never seen before. All list prices A and B type cells increased 10% November 1st, 1917. So it doesn't have the list here of the prices. It's very hard to find the prices that they were at uh, in these manuals because they probably always went up. Summary of advantages. This is the last page. The Edison Alkaline storage battery is the only battery built of steel. It is the only storage battery having an alkaline solution and using active materials of nickel hydrate positive and iron oxide negative. This construction and principle cause Edison alkaline storage batteries to possess advantages distinctly individual. Among these are it is light in weight, it occupies less space, it requires no spare parts, its steel container is unbreakable, it requires a minimum of attention, 
It suffers small loss of charge when idle. It does not need frequent hydrometer readings. Its tray assembly and cell connections are simple. It cannot suffer from sulfation in any kindred disease. Its exclusive use eliminates the need of a battery house. It is not subject to buckling or growing of plates. It may be discharged to zero or as low as may be desired without fear of injury. It requires no internal cleaning, the active materials being held securely in perforated steel tubes and pockets. It may be left unused, either, dis either charged or discharged, for indefinite time without any attention and suffer no injury. Its cells are hermetically sealed except for the single filler opening, indicating conclusively that no plate renewals, separated renewals, and other repairs are needed or expected. It can be put on charge at any time, regardless of how much or how little of the previous charge has been used, and it similarly may it may be char taken off charge at any time and used, whether fully charged or not. So the whole thing about internal cleaning, I've seen some of my Edison batteries, the original ones, uh, full of this black, hard... Um, some people have called it carbonate. Some people have called it nickel oxide. I'm not sure. But if you if you have these sitting around for decades and decades and you finally come upon them, it, it might have a crust of that stuff. And, and another crust, incrustation of, of salts. Um, so you got to keep cleaning these. Um, if you put them in operation and uh, anyway okay so that's the end of the manual alright this has been military industrial museum this has been part two of train lighting batteries Edison and uh, kind of a cool little photo you got looks like maybe water or something over here so train, train tack, train tracks. It's at night. See the stars. See the lighting. Looks to be four cars. You see a little container under there with the Edison batteries in there. Four cars and the engine. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but a lot of these axles from these these old designs probably true to this day. They had a uh, either alternator or a generator inside the axle that would provide electricity to the keep the batteries charged. The it, it, by the axle uh, rotating, it would turn the alternator or the generator and keep the batteries charged. So that's how they would keep those char this charge. The the forward motion of the the, the uh, train car along the track. So if anybody's wondering. Axle generator. <laughs> okay, so anyway, that's it. It's Military Industrial Museum again. Uh, just type Military Industrial Museum into your browser and it should come up. Um, there's a lot of subscribe and unsubscribe, hokey pokey. And that's a good way to override all that. And uh, I don't, I don't really, I guess I, I don't need your support. I mean, I, this channel's been around for 10 years and uh, it's been it's become a hobby because it's not profitable and so when I get to it I will um, I mean, if it became profitable I definitely would put more effort into it but it's more of a hobby and hobbies don't make money <laughs>